At one typical comprehensive school in Essex, children used to struggle with the noise levels in their classrooms. Um, it was really hard. Um, you couldn't really understand what the teacher was trying to explain. Um, I had to ask for help more than I usually do. Yeah, it was hard for me to study. If everyone was being noisy, I couldn't concentrate. I knew I could do the work, but it was quite embarrassing because I had to keep, keep on asking for help again and again. You feel really left out and you feel like you're just sitting in a corner in a lonely classroom. So it's quite, it hurts your feelings quite a bit. Yeah. Luckily, classrooms at Swain Park School are being renovated and at this school, acoustics are being improved to meet government guidelines. If the children can't hear, they're not going to learn. And it's, it's just very important. It's a basic um, requirement for learning to be able to hear and be able to be heard as well. Unfortunately, up and down the country, acoustic standards are being disregarded at a time when the government is rolling out a £57.9 billion school refurbishment and building programme. So the National Deaf Children's Society is leading a campaign to toughen up the rules. We are concerned because those standards, we believe, are being ignored and we are wasting millions and millions of pounds each year on creating new school buildings that are not fit for purpose. Educational audiologist David Canning has been working on the NDCS campaign. He's at Swain Park with the School Development Director and one of the school's communicators to trial an acoustics demo which simulates the classroom experience of a child with a cochlear implant. This is how the experiment's going to run. For about one minute, I'm going to ask you to read words, read from the list in front of you. Uh, Mark here is going to try and transcribe everything he hears, and uh, we'll see how many he gets correct at the end of one minute. Simon, when you're ready. Select. <laughs> find ways of overcoming difficulties that arise when they are solving problems. Mark, if you take your headphones off, we're finished. <laughs> That's not fair. I can't hear it. <laughs> that is impossible. Impossible. I noticed you were making quite a few errors and uh, missing out many errors. I couldn't hear it. Because this isn't very realistic, it's a very quiet classroom. We're going to have um, Jane, thank you Jane for coming in, uh, read some uh, just very quietly to herself to simulate her maybe having another, uh, another person in the classroom. And we're going to repeat what we just did. Are you ready? Headphones on again, please. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Simon. I think we'll stop at that point. <laughs> Headphones off, please, Mark. What happens? What happens? I can't hear. <laughs> but Jane was talking very quietly. It's just, it was just noise. It was just noise being thrown at me, and it's just, just voices and right. ugh, horrible. This classroom here is very echoey. It's very typical of many classrooms in the country. We're going to move to a classroom that's been sound treated to a very high standard. OK, we're now in the good room. Um, Simon, if you could uh, just read from your piece of paper as you did before. Mark, when you're ready to start typing. Good. Try and find ways of overcoming difficulties that arise when they are solving problems. OK, if we stop there. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, Jane. Mark, headphones off. Did you notice the difference? Jane's voice was just a kind of a mumble in the background, but I could hear Simon and I could type. Yeah, Very good. it was perfect. As you can see from what we're going to do today, we're going to solve problems using angle properties. This renovated room has an acoustically insulated ceiling the lighting has been changed and the floor has been carpeted in order to reduce background noise and reverberation levels. I really want to know... In this new classroom I find it a lot better and a lot less noisier and it gives me a lot of confidence to work as a group. I don't feel as left out anymore and I don't feel different from everyone else. I feel like an ordinary person. 
Sometimes, when I'm signing for the profoundly deaf students, I'm watching and then translating what is said. In the past, it was very stressful not being able to hear what was going on. Now, I can sit back and relax. I can translate what's said, which means I can provide full access. How would we go about finding angle C, then, in the... Angle C would be 80, because um, C is a corresponding angle. Before we did the changes, you would find that quite often children would be putting their hand up more than once to ask you how something was done or to explain something. It seemed that after we'd done the changes, they seemed to get it first time. With 3,000 secondary schools and 1,200 primary schools being rebuilt, refurbished or planned around the country, the NDCS is determined to spread the word. There is a large attainment gap between deaf children and all children. Um, at GCSEs, it's 42%. That means um, deaf children are 42% less likely to get five GCSE results. Minimum acoustic standards for all new school buildings are set out in Building Bulletin 93, part of the building regulations. Well, unfortunately, a lot of new schools are still being built which don't meet the regulations. Building Bulletin 93 contains a sort of a get-out clause. It contains, um, it allows designers to specify alternative performance standards such as sustainability, health and safety, etc. But unfortunately, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that these alternative performance standards are being abused. There is no monitoring and there's no incentive to comply with the standards. Many of the sort of the current trends in architecture and many of the current building materials lead to exactly the sorts of situation that we don't want in classrooms. Hard surfaces that are very reflective and very large open spaces that are very echoey and so on and make hearing and listening very difficult. Some local authorities are building, are designing to, to the guidelines, the standards, but then there is no test when the, when, the, when the building is completed to see whether it complies. Where acoustic testing has been carried out, schools in more than half of local authorities fail to meet the government's standards. And nearly a third of local authorities admit there has been no acoustic testing of schools in their area. NDCS has also been working with St Paul's Way Community School in East London. The school's about to be demolished and rebuilt with high-spec acoustics. It will come as a relief to deaf students there. I find it hard to listen because the background noise, people like talking and I can't like, concentrate on the teachers, what she's saying. In some of the classrooms it's been very hard for, for example, science, uh, where there are hard floors and there are stools which, are, which rub against the floor and makes it very loud and it's very hard for us to hear. When there's echoing, like, noises, um, sometimes I feel like, like to mess about. But, like, when it's, like, the class is quiet, and then um, I start to be good. Yeah. The St Paul's Way pupils are uniting with children from Swain Park to march on Westminster and lobby for the guidelines to be made compulsory. You certainly have my support, and if there's anything I can do in the House of Lords, please let me know. Hello. Yes? They're armed with a demo of typical poor acoustics. That really is loud and horrible, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you have to struggle against all of that and, you know, learn at the same time. It's not on because you've got to work twice as hard, haven't you? Or more, even more. The children head into the Houses of Parliament to rally more MPs to their cause. You know, just because children may be deaf or hard of hearing does not mean that they're any less intelligent or any, more, any less capable of learning and going on to achieve great things than any other child. So it's absolutely vital that we get the acoustics right. I had a great experience with the MP, so it was good. And I hope they made a lot of changes. It was telling the MPs um, about acoustics and then how to make it better. I hope that um, we got our message across and we have seen something today and hopefully the MPs um, will help us achieve what we're 